Right, we've had a fantastic day's margin fishing here at Biggin Lake in Aundel. If you want to see how I've caught all these fish, carry on watching. Hi everyone, uh, today we're at the awesome Biggin Lake near Aundel in Northamptonshire and we're going to do a spot of margin fishing for you. Um, the big, these fish are getting bigger and bigger, the margins have always been a great area to target them. Um, they're just becoming a little bit wiser as they get bigger, I've been caught lots of times so I'm going to run you through a couple of different ways we can now fish for them. Just show instead of just the usual dumping loads of bait in, a bit more refined try and catch these wary fish. Um, I'll give you a quick run through the tackle before we do any more because the tackle is mega important for this sort of fishing. These We could catch fish up to 10, even 20 pound in this lake. Um, we don't want our tackle letting us down. So uh, first of all, quickly talk on the pole. Today using the MTX2, I'm only going to be fishing quite short. I could quite happily use a margin pole for it but I'm simply using this one. This lake is really, really shallow and I want a lot of pole behind me just in case they shoot off into the lake. This is mega, mega strong, so it's the next best thing to a margin pole. Um, onto elastics in your top kits. I've got two rigs set up for doing two different things. Um, they're both with the heaviest slick, the 20 to 22, 2.6 mil, the orange one. Um, I use this for all my margin fishing in the summer. Still got loads and loads of stretch. Don't let the, the size put you off. They can run a long way on it, but it does really power up quickly like all the slicks do. Helps draw them back. When they turn up, you want to be making the most of them. Line-wise, again, no messing around. 023 um, power micron down to an 020 hook length. Same on both rigs. This one is going to be for fishing hard pellets. It's a lovely little light float, a 0.2 just with some strong shot as I'll go into when we actually start fishing. Um, and that hook size on there is just a 12 MXC4, an eyed hook with a band. We're gonna be fishing six and eight mil pellets on there. The other rig, we're gonna be fishing meat and ground bait. Again, it's just a different way of doing the, the ground bait. Not big cupping, just, a, just with one of our toss pots with one of the extenders on, so it holds quite a bit of bait. Again, the same line, big thick tip float, a bulk, uh, 020 hook length again, and this is just their size 12 MXC2, like the strong, the strong carp hook. Really simple, but we don't, like I say, it's all about reliability. We don't want to be hooking a big fish and losing it. Could be costly in a match or in a pleasure session. You want to be catching those big ones. That's what we go fishing for. Um, other things, landing that handle, want a nice strong, quite a long handle, these fish can pop up quite a way away from you. Using one of the new EFOS powers, these are absolutely unbelievable, really stiff, really, really strong. Going back onto this, you will see the landing net. I don't like a massive headed landing net, it's just not very efficient when you've got the fish on your lap. You want, you want to be able to hold them between your knees. So I use one of the carp landing nets, the, the, the smallest one, but they're really deep. So the fish will be sat in there, even if it's a great big 20 pounder, not wriggling around and I can knock it with a minimum of fuss. <laughs> right, so moving on to bait. Um, the big thing with bait choices now is margin fishing in the past, and it still does have at its odd place, but it was just dumping lots of ground bait or micros in fishing big hook baits over it. These fish are growing very wise to it and what you find is they'll come in the peg and they can they do your head in, in all honesty. You see them in the shallow water swirling around your bait and you just don't catch them. You get odd liners, foul look them and, and very few actual bites. Um, these fish, these like in this lake, these have been fished for for 30 years now. They recognise the margins as that's where they're going to feed. Um, so we haven't got to feed as much bait. They're, they're actively coming and looking in there now. So it's just making it easier to catch them for us now. And a big pile of bait isn't the way to do that. So there's a couple of different options. 
First of all, for down this, this edge, this lake is really shallow. Just going to literally toss pot in six mil hard pellets. Feed in a full, full large toss pot, so 20 pellets or so, rattling them in, making some noise, um, and then just fishing, just fishing an eight mil on the hook, just as a bit of a standout. This venue's got a lot of silvers in like a lot of places, and you just want, when that float goes under, you want it to be, make sure it's the right fish. Um, that's, let's say here it's nice and flat, but on venues where you've got a deeper shelf or it's sloping away, or you're just faced with deep water in the edge, some pegs are really deep these days where the shelf's worn away over the years. This is the best method to do that. Um, in the deep water, it's not gonna send them crazy and they will be living there earlier on in the day. They, they're naturally gonna sit there, so we can just tap a few pellets in and catch one as it comes into the peg. Um, if we're on a slope, we can just lay the bait down the slope slightly. If it's too too steep to be potting lots of bait in or, or ground bait and stuff, um, it just makes it really easy. You, generally really clean bites because you're attracting one fish at a time with very little bait. So that is one of the go-tos for me. I've won lots of money on that. It's a great way of fishing. Nice and cheap as well. You only need a bag of pellets. The other way we're gonna to do today is still with ground bait, but I'm gonna put a little twist on it for you. Um, I'll show you how to prepare it in a minute, but I've just got a kilo of ground bait. Uh, they've just finished spawning at the moment, so I just like to go for a krill ground bait when it's like that. They seem really tuned on to like natural baits and krill and stuff like that, just after they've finished spawning. So it's just a kilo of, uh, of krill. And then what I've got in this bag of is uh, in Blue Peter style, one I did at home. Um, I've got some what we call mushy meat. If you can see that, it's really fine particles of meat. There's uh, two tins of meat in there I did this morning. And it's, it's just put for a, a sausage grinder, like a meat grinder. It's not portable, my one, so I couldn't do it in front of you. But it, it, it is so fine, it makes it like a, like a ball of paste. And all we'll do, we'll do a little video on it in a minute. I'm gonna riddle my ground bait and then I'll riddle this into it. And it's really important just to riddle it through, mix it all together, then riddle it again, riddle it twice. And all the ground bait becomes uh, coated in all these particles of meat. Makes it really heavy, really attractive. And then I can just fish. I've got some eight mil meat here, just a big piece of eight mil meat over the top. Um, probably big cup a little bit in, not a full big pot, just a little bit to get a taste in the water. And then as, a, as I said earlier, just got one of our large uh, toss pots with one of the extenders. Try and get it off there, just to make it that bit bigger. Putting a good mouthful of bait in. Um, and then once they're there, it's just putting a little bit in, setting a trap for one fish again. Um, it stops them all going mad. There are times when we're gonna, if it's a bit slow, we might have to put a little bit more in with a big cup, but it's all about just trying to catch one fish at a time. We don't want, lots of big fish in our peg. It looks great, it's really exciting, but you don't actually catch much. Right, so I'm gonna show you how to make my mushy meaty ground bait mix. Really shouldn't be showing you this. I won a lot of money with this the last couple of years, but gotta help everyone out, haven't we? Um, so I've got the raw ingredients here, the ground bait already riddled, my meat, already put through my sausage grinder at home. I'm just going to show you how to riddle the two in together. Just tip that in. I want to give it a good work round. I'll just tip that up so you can see it. Good work round. Try and separate it the best you can. It's not going to separate properly, but just to work it into it. And then all I'll do is tip it in there and then pass it for a riddle. And like I say, passing it through twice is really important because the first time you will still see big bits of of just pink from the meat. You'll see as I, I go through the riddle here, this, this section is like there look, that are still, they're not coated in the ground bait. I've done a bit extra today just because uh, we're going to be filming for a while and want to get some shots, but two tins of meat and a kilo of ground bait is uh, my normal mix. You have to really push it through this first time because it's still there's still big balls of meat in there. And if I just I won't do it all, I'll just put that back on the riddle. 
you can see there now it's it's getting there but there's still the big the, like the proper bits of meat they're not coated yet so just pass it through again and it should all come out so it's just all like you only see the red of the ground but so heavy right so here we have the finished article really really heavy now really attractive you've got the best of both worlds you've got the meat fine particles of meat letting all the oils and the flavors off the ground bait mix into it letting all the flavors off and the bonus of it is it's now made it really really heavy so it's going to go in sit on the bottom and it's not blowing everywhere but it's still attracting the fish simply kicking the swim off probably probably put about that in like a palmful just just to get some scent in the water then hopefully we'll soon see some fish coming in and I can just use my uh, toss pot, just keep putting little bits in, lowering the bait in, fishing a piece of meat right over the top, catching one fish as it comes in. Um, we're not feeding too much, but there's so much attraction in that, that will keep drawing them in. And as the day goes on and the swim builds up, they'll get used to that smell being there and they'll be waiting ready to come in as soon as you drop it in. Bites are normally really, really instant with it. Let's get fishing. So the rigs are ready, the bait's ready, we've plumbed up, and now it's time to start fishing. I'm just gonna prime, just put a little taster in on both lines. With the pellet line, if I was on a more enclosed venue, I would just start tapping in bait. But this is a big lake. I just wanna put a good palmful in, 50, 60 pellets. See them there, Look, just a good palmful. And I'm gonna do, ship them out and slap them in with a real, really make some noise, just to try and draw the first fish in. And then as some more bait goes in, they'll, they'll come in a bit more regular, but I'm just trying to get that first one there. For the, uh, the meat edge, let's say, I just want to put a bit in to get a flavor in the bottom, like half a big cup, a little bit of hemp, just something nice and heavy, and just 20 cubes of eight mil meat, which is going to be my hook bait. I don't want to just go in with this one random piece of meat. I want them, they're already used to eating it if there's a few bits there. So that'll be my initial start for that edge. Let's get some bait in and let's get fishing. I'm really excited to catch some big fish here. Right, so we've just started fishing. A couple of missed bites from Silvers. Um, and it's gone a bit quicker than I was expecting. I thought that was gonna be another Silver and it's a carp. Not one of the biggest ones, by any means, but a lovely start. See that elastic, plenty of stretch. It tore off like they do in this shallow water. Back to a top kit and we can play nice and sensibly now. Yeah, nice little one, Not certainly not the biggest fish in the lake. Just on a, we've only we've only tapped the pellets in a couple of times, and we've had our first bite. So that's gr that's a great start, in all honesty. I'll just put this down. First one, we have to pick him up for you. Probably mirror carp. Probably five pound. Good one just to test the rigs and get started. I'll put him in the net and we'll hopefully have some his big brothers and sisters in a bit. I'm just going to feed it again. You'll see on camera about how I lay the rig in as well. The camera's aimed in on the float. So probably 12 pellets, 15 pellets in that large pot. Eight mil on the hook. A 
there's lots of fish starting to, they're not on the bait, but they're, they're already starting to know it's there. So, let's say, I've got a marker there with that tree. Tap my pellets out in one little pile and lay the rig out, up the, out on the slope as such. And I'm just hoping one of those ones that's starting to come in will have heard that bait go in and you shouldn't wait long for a bite. There we are, we're into another one. That, that's a bigger one. I think this is the first bigger fish of the day. Again, just no rush, to let the elastic do the work. I like to land the fish quickly, but I'd like to do exactly that, land it rather than lose it. There he is. Lovely comment. There we go. Be absolutely beautiful fish, that one. Right, so there's another fish down the edge. It's, it's worked really nicely. Not feeding a lot. Just catching them as they're just starting to get ready to come in your margins. This is why this method's so good. Not feeding a lot. You're not messing your peg up. Um, I hope I've just demonstrated that you don't need to feed a lot of bait to get the fish down your margins. All nice, clean bites. Not huge fish yet, but... The, the, the bigger ones are going to follow the smaller ones in as the day goes on. Um, but we're going to get this fish in and then we're going to try the other edge. Seen an odd little bit of movement down there. So we'll have a go on the meat. Lovely fish again. They're all, they're all much the same. It's five, six pound at the moment. Which are the small stamp for this lake in all honesty. But, uh, Great, great fun. Pulling really hard. I'm going to put him in the net and we'll get on the meat. And there we are, we're into the first fish down the edge on the, uh, on the meat line. Took a bit longer than expected. But, uh, starting to see some signs and this is the first one I've hooked. This one will just get stronger and stronger now as you build up the, the column of bait. Another lovely common, about six pound again. Now, I'll unhook this, I'll just show you the, how we, uh, we put the bait in the peg. Because it's very important how it comes out your pot. I don't want it going everywhere. Three or four cubes of meat and then top it off with the, with the mush. We go in. Now you're rigging. I want to dip the pole under the water, let it fall out. Right, so you don't want to be making lots of noise, dropping it from a height. It spreads it out and it, uh, it's driving the fish mad, which we don't want to be doing. We want to be trying to get clean bites. To another one. I'm starting to see a lot of activity down that, down on the meat now. As it, uh, as you build up the, the smell in the water. We're not feeding lots, but it's continually building up. 
We're seeing the activity there stirring that bait up. It should just get better and better. They're all peas in a pod today. After the first fish, they've all been commons, all sort of five, six, seven pound. Beautiful fish though. They really are in good condition in there. So that's our day done. I hope you've really enjoyed it. Picked up a few tips you can uh, take into your own fishing. We're just going to get the fish out and put them back now. If you're in the area, I definitely suggest a trip to Big In. Some fantastic fish here. And I hope to see you on the bank soon. Cheers for watching, guys.